a very very good evening to you all wherever you are joining me from today welcome to practical talk it's a pleasure to to be here today we take it not for granted oh yes i take it not for granted it's really a pleasure to be on here um just to remind us um please when you come on support what i do on here um this this platform is here to educate people to create a lot of awareness also to promote the good work fantastic work that many people are doing be it a charity or a project and to celebrate you know um great things that people are doing including our young people not only um for adults so please um support what we are doing here if you want to support us by stars that is why the stars buttons are there support um every little helps it goes towards some of the projects that i do so thank you once again thank you once again for joining us it's a privilege um to be on here tonight um just before we proceed i just want to introduce our topic to you today we are talking about the art we are talking about the art of multitasking how to wear different hats with grace now i know men multitask but i know women we are culprits of this and um sometimes a lot of the times we want to do everything at the same time we are catching up but i have a fantastic woman here today who is just gonna be taking us through sharing with us you know some of our experiences plus we have a very very great announcement for you just before we finish this program so relax share and invite others um as you as you look up for this program i just want to you know if you're new and you're joining me here once again these are the other things that i do as you can see i'm doing the one of the things right now hosting a show i'm also a minister in word and song i do events so if you have your events i am here as your event host whether it's online or in person i'm also a speaker and i'm an author of two books by god's grace so if you would like to come on here those are the details Floris Lyman at gmail.com. The telephone number is also there. So thank you very, very much for joining us today. I'm really, really happy. So we have a great woman, <laughs> which I don't want to say much. I'm going to let her introduce herself once again this is where we are at we are talking about the art of multitasking that's our screen right there so if you are a multitasker let's see if you can share because there is power in sharing you know you can always learn from somebody somebody else's own experience all of us don't know everything we learn by sharing ideas together so we are right here now live both on youtube and on facebook so thank you for joining us so viewers i have with me today a great woman i think i've known her for many years <laughs> maybe i'm be knowing to her <laughs> i've known her for many years i've seen her do a lot of great work around and um, both with women and um, i know she does a charity work back home in ghana just for her to know that I followed her on many occasions and um, I know she does a host of many other things there was a time when I had been to a prayer session where she had gathered mothers you know to pray for their children I think it was in Holiday Inn um, in somewhere in East London so um, I know she does a lot of things and as we move further today in the conversation this is where you're going to know <laughs> how she wears many hats she's going to be talking about something very interesting that she's been engaged in um the past few months so exciting times ahead of her but i have reverend prophetess shalene kwe i'm really learning with my pronunciations i hope i get it right 
um, a very, very blessed day to you, ma'am. It's a pleasure to have you on here out of your busy schedule. You've taken time to come. Well, thank you for coming um, on the platform. I would just like you to introduce yourself to the viewers. Tell us fully, 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 fully who you are. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor Limon. It's an honor to be on this platform and I must commend you for your great work. You've been consistent, you've been dedicated, you've been committed and you have such zeal and passion. And it's my prayer for you that the Lord will take you from glory to glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. So my name is Prophetess Charlene. I'm a daughter of the Most High God. I am a woman of God. I'm a counsellor. I'm a maternity nurse. I'm a school pastor, <laughs> I'm a disability advocate, and I am a recent movie producer, a mother of two boys, and my second son has a disability. So I'm a very strong champion of um, children with disabilities, and I'm actually a, um, an ambassador, parent ambassador for many disability charities. So that's me in a nutshell, and I'm an author of eight books, by the way. Yes, thank you. Oh, wow, do you mean eight books? Oh, wow. Okay, we, we need we need another time to come and talk about that. <laughs> that was a shocker. <laughs> I know there has been maybe one or two. Oh, wow, we need to come and talk about that. But let's not deviate too much today. We'll touch on that. Yeah, as we go along. So we're going straight on. Thank you so much for the introduction, viewers. As you can see, she just she just listed the, the many hats that she wears. And this is what we're talking about today. How to wear those hats, how to perform those different roles with grace, with strength that you are not stressing, you know. It's not taking your joy away because God has gifted us really to, 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 to function. Right, so my very first question today is going to be, what does multitasking mean to you personally? And how, how do you define it in the context of managing different roles in life? What does multitasking mean? Being able, Being to, able to do various tasks, not necessarily at the same time, but just being able to do different tasks like what I've just explained now about myself so I've got various roles but I'm just one person but I'm able to do all of them effectively that's what multitasking is being able to combine all the roles together but I always say that you can you can multitask but it's important not to be burnt out it's very important not to get yourself burnt out many times as women we feel like we're superwoman People say, oh, you're a superwoman. You're a superwoman. And now I've come to a stage where I'm like, nope, I am not superwoman. It's only God who's super. So before I used to find it really difficult to ask for help. Some That's another that's another weakness of being a multitasker because you can do it yourself. It's like, oh, I just do it myself. And then you can get overwhelmed. When you get overwhelmed, then you become burnt out. When you become burnt out, you can't pour from an empty cup, can you? So then you become ineffective in the various roles so I've learned that because I'm a multitasker I've had to restructure certain things I call it DDI I've learned to delegate I've learned to dialogue and I've learned how to be interactive in becoming a multitasker You just you just spoke there. Thank you so much. You just you just touched on it right there. Oh wow, 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 wow. So viewers, multitasking, and we are talking about multitasking with grace, grace, strength, the ability to do without burning out. Without burning out, nobody is saying issues will not happen, challenges will not come, stresses will not come. You know, but how to do it without losing your joy doing it with grace so reverend can you please share some practical experiences because somebody might be saying oh you 
you guys are just saying it it is what it is women we multitask blah 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 but you know we are human beings and we are real <laughs> we are not dummies so can you please share some personal experiences where you've had to wear multiple hats simultaneously and how and how did you navigate your way through them maybe just one or two examples thank you having a child with disability has actually made me more organized i didn't always start off as an organized person but because of the various appointments and admissions that he has i've had to learn how to be very very organized and multitask because with this situation you kind of live one day at a time i was sharing my experience yesterday at a women's panel and i said um there was a time where i spent six weeks at the hospital just six weeks not being able to go home just by my son's bedside because he was he was quite ill and it didn't start off as that we went to the gp and he referred us to the hospital and we ended up staying there for six weeks so a situation like that you have to learn how to multitask because it's not my only it's not my only child i've got an older son I had a husband at home there was things that need to be done so in all this you first will have to ask god for grace that's the first thing you acknowledge that god there's a lot going on but i need to multitask. i need to navigate my way through god give me the strength and what i've come to realize is that when there's a need you become creative for every need that arises your creativity comes out so i've learned how to be creative write down a routine team delegate there's some things that you can't you can't do if you want to do all of it you're you're going to burn out there's some things generally that you can't do i said i was at the hospital for six weeks so i can't do everything so some things i've got to say sister a would you be able to help me to do this can you help me to do that just to be able to maintain the smooth running and being a multitasker means you have to learn how to ask for help as I said about the DDI, you have to learn to delegate. You've got to learn to have a dialogue, discuss it. This is what's happening. This is my situation. I'm not able to do A, but so sister A, would you be able to help me to do this? And then interaction. It's a very busy household. My son, is his care is 24 hours. He's on a peg feed 18 hours a day. And he's non-verbal and he doesn't walk. So you can just imagine that in a household where you've got to run a household as well you have to delegate this person do this you do this even with my my 10 year old i'm like okay when the toilet roll is finished your job to fill up the the toilet roll on saturdays it's your job to clean all the tables tidy up the sofa do the cushions delegation delegate 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 otherwise you'll burn out that's how i've been able to navigate my way i haven't always been an organized person as i said and there was another incident where i think it was a community nurse and dietitian they'd come to my house for an annual review of my son's um care plan and they were asking about medication and because it was like this was like a new diagnosis it was quite overwhelming for me it's like i was stuck in this situation it's like that arose from nowhere so i'm trying to navigate my way through these people in my house and they're asking about medication and the medication was like it's in the cupboard here one was here one was here and i remember the <laughs> the community and i was like mom i know that it can be really overwhelming but you really must try to be more organized and it really hit me i mean carnally i was like the cheek of it how could she come to my house and you know be telling me what to do but after she left i reflected and said you know what sometimes we have to be introspective we have to have an honest conversation with ourselves and say you know what girl you have to be, be more organized i said you know what she's not going to come in and tell me that again no way i need to get on top of my game so then i started like a filing system all my son's letters will go like in a in a folder my older son has got his file i've got my file for my letter for my letters my husband as well has got his file for his letters so it's all organized and then I make sure like every day, instead of doing like the housework on like a Saturday, I do it as I go along. So if I've got spare time on Monday, okay, I'll just start, you know, doing the bathroom. I do it as I go along. And I just take one day 
at a time. I delegate. What I can't do, I'm not afraid now to ask for help. So women, you are not superwoman. We wear many, just being a woman on a whole, on a, on a whole is a multitask role. We have, we're doing so many things, but don't burn yourself out. Self-care, self-care, self-care all the way. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that. First of all, I just wanted to acknowledge your hard work. You've mentioned, um, you know, another area. Just with boldness and with confidence, I think that's going to encourage so many women, um, you know, that you have a, a, a very special, a very special young man, you know, that you care for around the clock. You know, that alone is a job on its own. Now, Again, this is where we see the grace of God, you know, just excelling over your life because how, how, I know you did mention that the nurse, you know, put you on a, on a reality check, but well done because it does not tell on you. They always say to us, we don't look like what we go through. You know, you have a professional job. You are a mother, you are a reverend, you have, you know, and all of those things, you're doing it with grace i'm not saying you know there's you've not complained maybe one day or you know but just the the care of your child having them um, a, a, a special needs um child you know some some women in that situation it, it takes them a whole lot of um faith and uh, and perseverance and determination to be able to get up you know and do something else so just everybody's different everybody's capacities are different so i want to say well done to you with no disregard you know to other women who some will say it's their dedicated time they've dedicated that time just to to look after their that child you know but you are also here and you've chosen alongside that you know to do other things so well done <laughs> i want to say well done for that i really want to acknowledge that um, thank, you much. thank you it's god's grace all the way not by my strength Thank you so much. Thank you so so much. So we are we 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 are moving on. One one of the things you said you said the nurse, you know, when she came, you know, the um to have the to talk about ministering the drug for your child, she was the one that put you in that check, you know. So then you you looked at everything and said, Look, I need to do things as I go along, not everything and most of the times as women we do that you know we just think i am guilty as well you know and i need to learn to manage myself you know you know that's why i'm saying we're always learning you know how can i manage myself better like you said having other people on board like the children just involving them some of us we don't let the children do anything how are we preparing them for for the future mm. go on yeah, how we repair yeah, them? How we, you know, we have to start now. We can't do everything. You'll just make yourself ill and burn yourself out if you know if you don't let them help you as well. I mean, some people I've heard people like, "Oh, I give myself my son two pounds to wash the dishes." I'm like, "Huh?" <laughs> but get your children involved. Do what works for you, but do get your children involved. You can't do it all. The Bible says in Proverbs 11, verse 1, that a false balance is an abomination. That's another scripture that opened my eyes. It's like, wow. So in everything that we do, we have to do, we have to create balance. Because you can be very busy, but not productive. Busy, but not productive. And I said, that's not going to be my portion. I want to be productive. I want to be efficient in my various roles. So we must learn that. that we have to We have to strike a balance. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. Yeah, we want to be busy, but productive at the same time. Thank you so much. You know, I know you've touched on um, some of this question, like the next question I'm asking already, just just thought a little bit more on that. How do you prioritize your different roles and responsibilities? I know you, you've touched on that when you were explaining how you manage. Actually, talking about this thing about children, you did say each parent should do what works for them. 
each mother or you know as a parent husband and wife whatever your dynamics is you know some of the children it's as if they are doing their own work they have to be bribed for that but you know for some of them it works they are happy you know like you say do what works for you we just don't want to set a pattern to say if you do not give them money they do not work that's you know otherwise they'll be always looking for money you know it's nice to give them a tip an incentive to encourage them but yeah i i i do agree to 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 what you say so in terms of priority let me say i have a b c d e and f hats that i'm wearing responsibilities you know um how do you prioritize how or how can we prioritize our different roles and responsibilities over to you well your family is your family is your first ministry. So that's the priority. Your family first. And everything else comes after that. In my situation, I have to take one day at a time. So my son's needs, his appointments. If I've got hospital admission or, you know, an appointment, that comes first. Sometimes you're invited to minister. I say, okay, I'm not able to minister this time because I'm at the hospital. I was sharing yesterday that there was a time where I wasn't ministering for over a year because it was, you know, my son had been newly diagnosed and I was in and out of hospital. Literally, it was like in, out, in, out, different surgery. So I spent a lot of time. There was no way that I could leave him and say, I'm going to minister somewhere because that is my priority. So it's just a matter of knowing your priority. First things come first. Everything else follows. And if you're not able to do something at a certain time, it doesn't mean later on you're not able to do it. Like now that my son has got like more carers, we have like carers that come at night for a few nights a week. I made you able to do more things now. I can accept some, you know, ministration somewhere. You know, I always make sure that I do it on the days that my son's carer comes in the afternoon and then I want to do something. I make sure I book it at that time. So it's all about plan the schedule and schedule a plan, you know, and then you prioritize, you write things down, keep your diary and then, you know, stick to it and do leave the rest to God. But your family is your first ministry. So they come first. So that's the priority. Everything else falls into place, but everybody's family dynamics is different. So you have to do what works for you and know what you, what your family dynamics are. God's grace is sufficient for us in Jesus' name. <laughs> wow. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, um, knowing that you are somebody who is very active, you know, for you to sit down for a year, how, <laughs> even though, you know, um, bless him, you have to take that time off because um, of your son. And that's what we call priority. You know, sometimes that's a sacrifice that we make. There is no business in getting engaged in other things and you know some other areas are suffering um you know in our lives we have to pay attention to those areas but how did you cope just <laughs> because you have some some mothers or some women it's like they'll be very frustrating even though they know they are staying for a very good reason how do you cope with that again that's carrying we are in a heart with grace it's wearing a hat, it's wearing a hat. And I think I shared a post earlier on today about cultivating joy, that we say the joy of the Lord is our strength, but we have to learn to cultivate it. We have to begin to see things from the you know, faith perspective and hope perspective. If you want to sit down and say, oh, my son is ill, am I able to go anywhere and I'm just stuck here and I could be ministering and I'm leaving, you will fall into depression. You will start to get anxiety. You will, you will start having panic attacks. You, you know, this pity party. The one thing I said from early on, I said, this pity party, I'm not going to get myself involved in a pity party. So anybody that knows me knows I'm always smiling. I'm always laughing. I always try to create and cultivate my joy. So while I was there, I've always got my book with me. I've always got my journal. I'm writing. That's how I've been able to write all those books. There were days where I'd be at my son's bedside with my journal and just documenting my thoughts or something that somebody said that really resonated and I'll write it all down. So I'm cultivating joy. So even while I'm there, I'm still being creative. 
there was a time where I was doing I was doing a course in counselling, and I wasn't able to I wasn't able to finish. I had to defer for a while because of my son. Whatever, but it's okay. You count it all as joy. I mean, as human beings, when it happens, you get a bit disappointed. Just like, oh God, I could have really been doing this, but God knows the end from the beginning. And having that time off, it wasn't it wasn't a waste. God uses all our experiences. I always say that whatever we go through is an empowerment tool. It's used to empower others. You've invited me here on this platform. If I didn't find myself in a situation, you wouldn't reach out to me to come and share because I have nothing to share. But obviously, because I'm in this situation, I'm going through, you've seen it and you've admired it and said, wow, I want to know how she's been able to navigate her way through. So it's not wasted. It's an experience. It's amazing that in this season, everybody's like, like notes and like, wow, how are you able to, how are you able to, how are you able to do this? How are you able to do And I'm like, God, so even in the midst of the situation, God is still shining his light. So, you know, God has got a plan. So even though I wasn't able to minister at that time and I was, you know, just there, but I was, God was still ministering to me. I was still ministering in my own diverse way, still writing books, still doing my journal, you know, still encouraging people the best way, way I could, still do my video. Sometimes I'll do my video from the hospital. I'll go to the hospital chaplain or go outside and record my video. And nobody even knows that I'm at the hospital. Put my makeup on, my red lipstick, and I'm, I'm gone. <laughs> my red lipstick, actually. It's, it's, it's a great empowerment tool. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, there's something about red lipstick, a lot of... <laughs> oh, wow. You know, um, wow. I don't know what to say, Reverend. I myself, I'm receiving right now. I'm, I'm just being blessed. And, you know, sometimes when we think that um, our own issues are, are so much, you know, and you just think, oh, you're not able to see, even see or consider, okay, that there are other people who might be similar when you're going to that particular situation if you're not careful you won't even pay attention you won't be able to do anything but this you this is you finding your own way you know your answers are just leading me to, to, to <laughs> connect me to the questions i have to do with the answers already you know these are techniques that you have been using you know you you still in the midst of it all, you still stood up. Now, this is to encourage us, as many of us women, mothers out there, you're thinking, oh, I'm in this situation, what can I do? Even in that situation that looks messy, you can do something. Because here she's saying, while she was with her son in the hospital, she was still finding a way to write. She was journaling. She was doing so, you, you know. So, this to encourage you out there, that just because, especially maybe if you have a child that has a need, you know, do not be discouraged, do not feel segregated, you know, um, find yourself as a mother, be encouraged. This is an example we have here in front of us. And one thing I admire about you, Rev, when you've never, like, you, you're always in the forefront. No, maybe at some point we're, we're gonna come and talk about this. Um, supporting parents who have, you know, who have special needs children. How to, how to to just stand out with your child. Thank you so so much. I'm really really, <laughs> I'm just touched. Yeah, thank you so much. So, we've we've talked about techniques already. Um, what you do. So, in your opinion, what are some of the pitfalls? in multitasking how can individuals avoid burn out or feeling overwhelmed i know you've talked about planning and again this is an area where a lot of us women i know we need to learn because if you plan well you'll be able to function even better instead of just being jack and jill in everything even if it, it's got to do with your own matter so what are the pitfalls potential pitfalls of multitasking how can individuals avoid burnout or feeling overwhelmed over to you one of the biggest pitfalls you've just mentioned it about being a multitasker or multitasking is that burnout 
And that's why I said earlier about delegation, delegation, delegation. Always think about your well-being. Mental health is real. It is real. We have to look after our mental health. We've got to look after our well-being. Self-care is not a luxury. It's a necessity. So you must always think, this thing that I'm doing, how is it affecting my mental health? How can I make the load easier? And I know in our society, a lot of the, you know, especially Africans, we don't want to delegate. A lot of the, you know, European people, they don't mind getting a cleaner once a week or once a fortnight. But for an African person, it's like, huh? A cleaner? For what? So what will, what's all, what, will, what will I be doing? But at least if you have the cleaner to do that, you can do other things. There's no harm in that. And I'm seeing like, is there's a rise of a lot of women now who are trying to like, you know, okay, I'm gonna employ a cleaner that will come, even if it's just every every two weeks to do like a thorough cleaning so that you can have that time to relax. It's okay if you're not able to cook every day. If you wanna cook, you wanna put it in the freezer and defrost it, that's fine. Other people can order food as well. Some people can, there's anything that is gonna make your load lighter. If you've got to get that dishwasher, get the dishwasher. Get the dishwasher. There is no trophy anywhere for somebody who was burnt out. There's, there's none. Get the dishwasher. Get the tumble dryer. Anything that's gonna make your life easier women let's do it we can do better if you you have to get that cleaner we think oh it's so expensive oh it's so expensive that 30 pounds you're going to give to the cleaner you can spend it on the high street in 10 minutes buying unnecessary stuff so why not invest that in a cleaner that will come once every two weeks it can be done once you put your mind to it that every two weeks i'm going to let this cleaner come and do the house so that i can do other things so that i can go to the gym so that I can go for a walk, so that I can do something with my other children, something. Let's learn how to do those things and delegate those roles. If somebody's got to cook, let them cook. You've got to get your tumble dryer, get your tumble dryer. Get the cleaner, get the cleaner. Go and do your nails, go and have your pedicure. Self-care. Because without you, a woman is a manager of her home. You're the heartbeat of that home. The day anything happens to you, the chapter of that family, so you have to, you have to be able to do not fall into that, that lie of superwoman and getting yourself burnt out. There's no trophy anywhere for you. Thank you. Wow, viewers, we just had, we just had, wow. I think the, the, the last program I had on here was about self-care. And it's so important, um, self-care. We have to, you know, find time in the midst of, to be able to function, especially if you're functioning in, you know, we are in different hearts. You need time to look after yourself. You need time to rejuvenate. You need time to rest, even to be able to plan um, for your next um, responsibility that you're going to be having you know um wow yeah, when you wear your own very well <laughs> more grace to you because everything that you said is like you know talking about the cleaning bit um i think because some of us have come from a place where that's how things were it makes us feel powerless it makes us feel not satisfied if anybody does something you know my husband said to me pastor floyd when I do something, you always go back and check it. <laughs> so there are some things you will say to me, I'm not going to touch that. You will do it because if I go and I do So I just need to relax and just let it be the fact that he's made the effort to do it. You know, and talking about having other people on board, family members on board, you know, bringing a cleaner in. To be honest, that's an idea I have thought about. And very soon I will start practicing it because what's that money? What's that money? You know, it's like we keep, we'll say we don't have it, we don't have it, but you can go and spend it on shoe, it, 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 you know, and somebody can come and clean better because as we are getting younger, you know, 
you can't, there is some kind of bending you can't be doing with your body. To be honest, you know, so you need someone else who is agile enough to be able to come, come out once in a while. Once in a, I'm not going to lie, it's the first time I've paid a window cleaner to clean the whole house, the windows. I met him on my way home. And to be honest, it was not really expensive because normally I walk past there and ask, how is the how much is the price? I'm like, that's too much. Why am I paying to clean window? And I felt so good, you know. I felt so good um doing that. You know, <laughs> as a young man playing with mommy. I felt so good um um doing that. So this is just to encourage us, really, um, moms, women, mothers. Self care, self care. You know, I had my hair on my head for 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 many for many weeks because I was doing an assignment. I did not have time for my. Once I finished, it's like I was set free from. <laughs> I went to do it. I went to do it. I went to do my my nails. I'm like I I am going to do this. I don't like doing my 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 fingers, but definitely my feet because I'm always playing with water. I don't know, so women cope with everybody has their grace, but definitely my feet. Get, give it a good scrub, you know, and um, make sure I looked after my hair. So self care very very important. Um, Reverend, before we before I go to something that I really want viewers to know about today, you you spoken about books. Um, like I said, we'll come back two things. Um, I think we'll come back to encourage women in your position who have children with special needs. You know, whether their needs are mild, autistic, or any other need. We need to talk about those things because there is many in our communities and some people are just hidden in their own little corner. So hopefully I pray that I'll be able to, to, to borrow some time off you because you are a living example and many people will be encouraged um, by the things that you do. Yeah, I, for many of us that follow Nana, na, Nana Yao and her mom, you know, my journey of autism. So many people are following them, thousands, you know, and I'm glad that things like this is happening in Africa. So it means the world is really changing in the way we, we receive people in this situation. So I really want to celebrate you and many other women in that position. So talking about, talking about, um, I think I want us to put a, a, a closure to this so that we can come to something else before we go. Um, what is your final word for now in terms of women that are multitasking, wearing many hats, many, it might not be for everybody, but for you, you know that you are multitasking, you're wearing so many hats. What's the one word or a few words that you would like to say to encourage them? You're the, heart, you're the heartbeat of the family. You're so special in that family. Women are wonderful. In fact, God created women as wonderful species. We are wonderful. We have many roles to play, but don't burn yourself out. If you need help, get the help. I've been saying lately that silence is not always golden. Speak out. There's always help out there. Get the support. Create a support network find people that you can be vulnerable with you can't be vulnerable with everyone but there are some people that you can be vulnerable with speak out get help create your support system book yourself care plan a schedule and schedule a plan even for your self-care make that a priority even if it's once a week self-care doesn't have to be going to the spa or having a pedicure manicure even just going for a walk you know, it's called ecotherapy. Just going out for a walk and admiring nature and, you know, just something for you. Reading a book somewhere in a corner or running your bath, your bubble bath and reading a book and having your juice or whatever. It's all self-care. Women, let's look, let's do better. Let's look after ourselves because being a woman is a multitasking role. No matter what it is, no matter who you are, just being a woman, especially when you're a mother as well. You have to juggle those roles whether you like it or not. So whilst we're doing that, let's learn to look after ourselves and delegate, delegate, delegate. Dialogue, speak out, interact, 
Say what you need. There's somebody out there that can meet that need. May the Lord help us. May the Lord grant us more grace and more strength. And may your divine creativity kick in. I forgot to mention, Pastor Lim, on that. During this time of me being away from home so much because of my son's condition, I actually, it's like when I'm at home, I appreciate being at home so much. And I've been somebody who always liked decor. But through this situation, I've actually been interested in interior design. And I've been doing interior, yes, I've been doing interior design, you know, for myself in the house and few friends and family. So through the situation, so certain circumstances will bring out the creativity in you. So find that creative creativity within that circumstance. More grace. More grace. <laughs> you just touched on something. You just touched on something. This is what we are saying. We don't know whatever situation somebody is in right now. As a woman, as a mother, you know, businesswoman, whatever you are doing, even in the midst of that situation, God gives you a breakthrough. God shows you a way. God, you know, because you know why? We can think. Again, we need to make room to think. We need to make, we need to clear the, the space in our brain to be able to think, you know, because things are bad, projects are bad, ideas, look now, look at what else you've added to your many hearts, designing, <laughs> designing, and it's beginning to go from family to friend, the next year you think you have proper clients, wow. You know, thank you, Prophetess Jane, she said you are such an amazing example, um, she's celebrating you and she was supporting when you were talking about journaling, you know, that journaling is such a therapy. Um, wow. <laughs> Thank you so much, Reverend. Well, talking about the many hats that you wear, this is something new. And when I saw it first, I'm like, oh, wow, I didn't know that Reverend has uh, acting and, you know, so before I even spill the beans, well, I, I'm sure many people watching us, some people have seen, some people have not seen, but we are calling the attention of you viewers to support this fantastic woman here. We need to support the work that she does. Kindly please tell us about the latest new hat. Maybe you should have worn a hat physically. <laughs> The latest new hat that you have been wearing, spill it over now quickly. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> well, I've just recently produced a movie called Shades of Grace. It was actually filmed around June area. It was, yeah, filmed around June time, sorry, June time in Ghana. And we had the movie premiere in Ghana, premiered in Ghana in November for my birthday. And... US, London, it's your time now. People have been asking, no, oh, when are we going to have it in London? So next month on the 25th of May, we're having the London movie premiere for Shades of Grace. This is a movie that was given to me, the title and everything, and the storyline was given to me since 2019. What have you know? Yes, 2019. And I'd had the script written over here and... The actors and stuff were here, but due to COVID, we had to cancel everything. And it was just kind of like put on the back burner. So God being so good, I was able to collaborate with um, Apostle Pascal Amanfo, who is a director in Ghana who does Christian movies. And it just so happened that I was going to Ghana in April to host the women's conference. So he came to the women's conference. We did collaboration. And then I filmed my scene while I was in Ghana. And I left the rest in his hands while I was away. So I chose all the actors that I wanted. So I looked at the script and we just kind of like, you know, delegated. This one would be good for this role. This one would be good for this role. And I left it in his hands and I came back here and we had a wonderful movie. I just, I love storytelling. And as I said, I've, I've written books. But I just feel like with movies, it's like an art of storytelling with the visuals, the light, you have the emotional connection. People seem to really love movies. And I just thought, you know what? I think God wants us to be able to propagate the gospel in various ways. So through books, through media, 
any form of media, you know, film. So I thought, you know what, this is the this is a very good inspiration that God has given me. Movies to tell the story of what happens behind the scenes in the life of three women. So it's three women, their unique life challenges, the pain they go through, and how God's grace sustains them. Because we're all going through something. No matter how lovely and packaged we all look, everybody is going through something behind the scenes. But God's grace comes in different shades according to our capabilities. So that's what Shades of Grace is all about. The woman helped by God. We're women and we're helped by God. So I would love to implore all of you to come out in your numbers May 25th to support this great movie to have a wonderful time let's create let's create memories have our popcorn <laughs> just relax and watch the movie take pictures on the red carpet and enjoy yourself to the glory of god thank you i love that i love that anyway i've secured my tickets already and i have been sharing and inviting others you know ladies times like this that's when you just need to come out come out and have a refreshing time come out connect with others meet with others you know um it's happening that's the flyer it is happening um yes happening this is greenwich Odeon greenwich um i will be posting it on my page and also reverend charlene is also on facebook charlene quay you can connect with her and um the flyers on her facebook happening on saturday the 25th of may it's a movie premiere shades of grace the woman helped by god as you can see i'm um, sharing stories of three different women and you know how the lord saw them through so that's the ticket get your ticket audion cinema greenwich it's easier um just close out to the o2 you can get a um get down on a train and just make your way or you can drive especially if it's in the evening you can drive there is parking just that like you have to just pay a little bit just um to make sure your car is secured um so i will continue to advertise this because i i believe in supporting in my only two way you know the good work remember that's one of the things i do on my on my platform and i was just amazed to see that you know you have a passion um for acting <laughs> you know that's another hat that you're wearing and uh, what gave you the what how how did that passion come about if you don't mind me asking how did it come about it's purely an inspiration from the holy spirit number one and number two being in ministry women go through so many things we, we've all you know you hear so many so many stories in our daily walk in ministry at work and i just thought you know what you know, we really need to do better at storytelling and really get the message out there. So that's how I was just, just it's just an inspiration from the Holy Spirit. Because even now, when I sit back and reflect, even myself, I'm just like, wow, God, you're really good. God, you're really, really good. How it all came into manifestation. And it's like, it's a reality now. It's like, you know, God, you're really, really faithful. So it's just an inspiration from the Holy Spirit and just all that goes on around us as women in ministry. We have so many stories and we hear so much happening in the lives of, you know, the women that we pastor. So it's just the art of storytelling and propagating the word. There's a form of evangelism, getting the word out there and fostering hope. Thank you very, very much, Reverend. And, um, you know, I know the launch was done in Ghana. It was successful. I was seeing all, all the pictures, all the videos flying. And uh, we want to pray that the this UK one as well, it will blow your mind for your hard work. The Bible says, you know, he will bless the works of our hands. He say, whatever your hands find it to do, do it diligently. And as you've put your labor into this, may Lord extend it. Um, I told you I was talking to somebody and the person was saying, ah, I've been thinking of uh, acting. Whilst I was saying to them, I've been thinking of somebody to act some storyline about some of my story. You know, and we were laughing. So <laughs> it's like she said to me, ah, maybe this is the time, <laughs> you know. So 
you don't know when you do something that is going to trigger you know someone else all this we are talking about again is the grace because grace attracts you know grace you know it attracts favor attracts um you know opportunities so we we pray that um as you are wearing this many hats you know you, you continue to be an inspiration um to to many others so how can you be contacted because i know you are a coach you mentor people you're a midwife um a a, a nursing a, you know a, a maternity you know um nurse you do a lot of things and i know also that you have your charity back home. like i said today is not enough today is definitely not enough so i'm gonna really beg everyone to to come back um at some point i'm not sure what's your availability the next week but if you are available we come and do a part two to talk about the um mothers with with special needs children um yes i think it's really really necessary and um, we can talk about other things but how can you be contacted and what about your books as well are they on amazon or how can women connect with you thank you very much so all my books are on amazon my name is charlene quay so you can find me on um facebook charlene quay amazon charlene quay instagram is diamond pillar gems diamond pillar gems on instagram on tiktok is also charlene quay and then my number if anybody wants to contact me it's 07908 one seven three five two seven that's zero seven nine zero eight one seven three five two seven and the name charlene quay on all my social media handles apart from instagram where it's diamond pillar gems so do follow me any information to talk or anything just um contact me thank you very much Thank you very much for that. So I've just put um, her details. Maybe you have an event or, you know, anything that has to do with women or with children. She's an educator also. She just, you know, told you what she does with young people. And I know she has a foundation in, um, in Ghana where she really invests in the lives of orphans um, back home. So she does a lot of things. Um, you know, and I believe some of the, the, the projects she's doing, you know, the finances are going to, you know, the mouths that she's feeding back home. So please let us support the great work that um, she's doing. One thing I believe about supporting, you know, you support one person, God uses another 10, <laughs> 10 15 people, you know, to support you. It's better for us to give. Um, than to receive so our giving can be in various forms and supporting the work that others are doing forget about your own because God sends other people to look after you know and help you nurture yours as well Everyone, thank you so so much um, for your time that you've given us um, it's not enough <laughs> because there is so much more that we can talk about um, hopefully our next meeting I, I will have taken all the books from you at least even if it's four or five of the books we, we I didn't know and you don't publicize them that much <laughs> well I would like to, to to just take the photos put them so we can actually show people let people see some of the things that you've written about but um, we're grateful for the movie um, this is the the flyer for the movie premiere so you still have a month, but try and buy your ticket and just put it aside. Invite a friend. It's happening in Odeon Cinema, Greenwich, on Saturday the 25th of May. So please, um, it's lovely. I've all I've been to premieres. I've always been to premiere um in the O2. I used to go there. I just love it. I used to carry at least one or two people from you know from my from my lovely fellowship just just a beautiful night out you know and um it's it's, it's lovely thank you so much the patience thank you one of god you're welcome so treat yourself you're living in london treat yourself let's support the great work of reverend shalin let's support this work this is her new project let us support it 
and um, as you support others you will be supported if we, what's the last word <laughs> that you have for us today for our mothers wives for the women what's the last word i just want to pray for you know all the women listening that you know god's grace will be sufficient for you that any situation that you're in we don't whether to turn to the left or the right the bible says in isaiah 30 21 that you will hear a word saying turn to the left or turn to the right I pray that you'll be loosed for the Lord's glory. Be loosed for his glory. And the Lord said he's recorded your tears in a bottle. And I believe that any secret tears that any of you are crying, the Lord will give you public victory. Your labour will not be in vain. Your labour over your family, over your children, it will not be in vain. You will live long in good health to enjoy the fruit of your labour. El Roy, the God who sees, the God who knows all things shall reward you accordingly in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you that you'll be protected, that you'll be preserved, that no evil will come near your dwelling place. No harm shall come near you. You will not be a victim of error. I pray for you that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. As we're going into a new week, I pray that grace will attend your path and that victory on every side a miracle, a testimony, the Lord shall put laughter in your mouth and he shall give you a solution in the mighty name of Jesus. You're blessed and you're highly favoured. I love you all. Thank you very much. Amen. Well, thank you so much for that, um, um, Reverend Shalene, Reverend Prophetess Shalene. Thank you very, very much. I, I've been blessed. <laughs> I forgot that um, I was hosting but yeah, we are human beings. So, um, you know, and here we talk about reality of life. There is nothing about faking it or, or, or making it. It's just, it's just real. So this platform is to encourage people. This platform is to create awareness. This platform is to bring education, you know, about just the, the many things that we just live daily. So kindly please follow this page, Practical Talk. And um, if you are watching us via YouTube, please do uh, subscribe via YouTube and share this program. Please do share this program. Once again, I want to show you um, that's the that's the, the 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 ticket for the for the premiere. You will see it on my page. If you visit the page, you will see it there. So please um, secure your ticket. Let's support the work. And thank you for watching us um, on Facebook. Those of you on YouTube support um, this channel. And remember, if you would like to come on to share any fantastic work that you are doing or a project, please do not hesitate to contact me. And I want to say thank you very, very much for joining today. Um, God bless you all and have a great week ahead. So till then, we want to say goodbye to you. Thank you for joining. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for, thank you, Dickiness. She said thank you, Reverend, for your contribution. Thank you all for joining us today. God bless you. Bye for.